Hi and welcome to the sixth year higher level maths revision video. This video we're going to look at revision worksheet number nine, which is trigonometry and it's a section B style question. The question tells us that three points A, B and C are on a horizontal roadway and we can see that on the diagram on the right, such that the length of AB is 35 metres, the length of BC is 70 metres. Now neither of them are on the diagram, so what I would suggest you do is any information you're given in the paragraph that's not on your diagram, you can add it in. So this bit here is 35 metres and B to C is 70 metres. It tells us that a vertical mobile full mass DT has, D, has its base D at the same level of the roadway. So what we really are going to have here are right angle triangles because we have this vertical pole and we have the horizontal ground. The angles of elevation from A, B and C to the top of the tower T are such that TAD, which is this one here, so this is angle A, um, is 3 over 20, TBD, which is this one here, is 1 over 5, and TCD, which is this angle here, is 3 over 13. Let H be the height of the mobile foam mass DT and express DA, DB and DC in terms of H. So let's start with DA. I'm going to draw a little triangle for me to work with. So here is A, here is D, here is T. This is my height H. This is the angle that I'm working with. Now, just be careful. Um, when we give them the tan, the tan is opposite over adjacent. So let's just label this very quickly. So there's my hypotenuse, here's my opposite, here's my adjacent. But this three over 20 doesn't mean that the opposite side was three and the adjacent side was 20. It means that when the opposite was put over the adjacent, the fraction simplified down to three over 20. So we can use this to help us to write um, the side we want, which is DA in terms of H, but we can't go straight to numbers. So just be careful with that. So if I want to work with tan, <clears throat> I'm going to let my DA be X. So the tan of A in the diagram above is opposite over adjacent H over X, which is also equal to 3 over 20, which is what we were given in the question. Rearranging this, I get 20 H is equal to 3 X. I want to get X on its own, so it gives me 20 H over 3 which is what we have for DA. So we're going to do something pretty similar for the next two sides that we want. So I'm going to work with the triangle with B and D. So there's B, there's D, there's T, here's my angle, here's H. Again, here's my opposite, here's my adjacent. I'm going to call this one Y. So here, my tan of B is equal to opposite over adjacent, so H over Y, which is also equal to 1 over 5 is what the question gave us, and Y is equal to 5H, and that is the length of DB, which they asked for. And the third and um, final side they want is the length of DC, so here is C, here is T, here is D, and here is H. So the tan of C, I'm going to call this side Z in this case, here's my opposite, here's my adjacent, so in this case it is H over Z and that gives me 3 over 13. Rearranging this, I get 3Z is equal to 13H, so Z is equal to 13H over 3, which is the length of DC. So we wanted each of those sides in terms of H, so having H there in our answer is absolutely perfect. So part two of this then asks us to use the cosine rule to find cos of angle ABD in this form here. So we need to pull out a triangle. So the triangle I'm going to pull out is the triangle ADB and they want the angle ABD which is this one here and we're going to use the cosine rule. So let's put some um, let's put some numbers on this. When I worked in the last part, I've put the 
answers up here. I found that D to A was 20 H over 3. I found D to B was 5 H. And initially in the question, they told me that A, B is equal to 35 meters. So we're actually looking at this triangle here. Imagine we're looking straight down from the from above, straight down and looking on this triangle. And I want to find cause of this angle. So let's work with the cosine rule. So the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So how we want to relabel it is the angle you want is here. The opposite side has a lowercase version of that letter. I'm going to call this side b or this angle b which makes this side b and this c which makes this side c. So I get 20h over 3 squared is equal to 5h squared plus 35 squared minus 2 times 5h times 35 cause of and we can call this whatever you want I'm going to leave it as a here for a second but that's going to be the answer that we want so let's do a little bit of clean up here and see where we can go so squaring a fraction we square the top and square the bottom we get 25h squared plus 35 squared is 1225 and here we get minus 350h cause of a. I want to get cause of a on its own so I'm going to bring this over 350h cause a is equal to 25h squared minus 400h squared over 9 plus 1,225. Now, um, it completely depends at this point what you want to do. Um, it depends on how well you want or how well you work with your fractions. So I would probably treat this as 25 take away 400 over 9. So ignoring that h squared and bringing them as into, into a single fraction. However, that will mean you have a little bit more complicated division to do when we bring over the 350h. So another way you could work this if you're not a big fan of fractions is let's get rid of the fraction. So let's multiply across by 9. So the whole equation by 9, which creates all, well, not whole numbers because we don't know how h is at this point, but it will create numbers that have no denominators. So 350h cos a by 9 um, will give us 3150h cos a is equal to 25h squared by 9. That gives me 225h squared. Um, the fraction, when I multiply by 9, I'm left with just the numerators, the minus 400h squared plus 1225 by 9 gives me plus 11,025. So now I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup of my like terms here, which is now a lot easier because I don't have my fraction. Because A equals, so 225 minus my 400 H squared. So I get minus. So I'm actually going to bring my 11,000 and 25 first, and then I'm going to write my minus 175h squared. Now, I want to just get cos on its own, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3150, and then I'm going to deal with the form that I need this in. And sorry, that should be 3150h. So that gets me my cos a, which is exactly what I want. And on this side, what I need to look at is to see, well, is this in the format that they asked for? So up here, they told us that they wanted it in the form, in the form A minus H squared BH. So we have something that looks quite like that. But notice that here, the H squared has no denominator. Well, we have 175. So let's check to see if that 175 is a common factor of the top line. And it is. So I can pull that out and write 175 times 
This is 63, take away h squared, all over. And now we can check to see if 175 is a factor, the bottom line, and it is. So this can be written as 175 times 18h. And then the 175s divide into each other, i.e. they cancel. And what we're left is the cos of angle ABD is equal to 63 take away h squared all over 18h. So part three then asks us to similarly show that cos of angle DBC is equal to this. So let's take another triangle. So we're looking here at D. B, C, remember that they told us that this length here was 70 meters. So here's my B, my D and my C. There's 70 meters. Up here I have our answers from part one. So D, B is 5H and D, C is 13H over 3. We want angle DBC, which is this angle here. Uh, we're going to use the cosine rule again. So here is my A and side A. Remember, A is always the angle we're working with in the cosine rule. I'm going to call this one B, this B. I'm going to leave the C as C. So when we go and fill into our formula, we get A squared, which is 13H over 3 squared, is equal to B squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a and then we can work that through so let's work with the squaring of fractions so we square the top square the bottom 169 h squared over 9 is equal to squaring this 4900 plus 25 h squared minus 700 h cos a again if you're happy to work with fractions do if you're not let's multiply across by nine so this gives me 169 h squared is equal to so 4900 multiplied by nine that gives me 44100 plus 25 by 9 gives me 225 h squared minus 700 h cos a all multiplied by 9 gives me minus 6300 h cos a. I want the cos a on its own so let's bring that across the equals cos a is equal to 44100. I'm going to take away a 169 h squared from both sides. So I have 225 h squared minus 169 h squared and what that gives me is plus 56 h squared and to finish that off I'm going to divide that by 6,000. Oh, I've lost my h here. Apologies, so this is 6,300 h. So I'm dividing both sides by 6,300 h. And the right hand side is now our cos exactly as we wanted. Uh, the right hand side, now in this case, part two gave us the form they wanted it in. Part three actually gave us the answer. So again, we we'll probably have a factor here that we can pull out. So again, let's look at the h squared because that's giving us a big hint. It's 2h squared, but we have 56h squared. So let's see if 28 is a factor to all the other numbers. So let's divide in 28 and it does divide into the top line and it does divide into the bottom line. So let's clean that up. So cos A is equal to, let's pull 28 out. I'm not pulling out the 56 because I do want a 2 to stay in front of that h squared. So 28, and when I pull that out, I get 1,575 plus 2h squared all over. If I divide in 28 to the bottom, I get 28 times 225h. The 28s cancel and I have exactly what they asked us for. So the answer is the cos of angle DBC is equal to 
575 plus 2h squared all over 225h, which is what exactly we wanted. So a QED in there. Part four asks us to show that cos of 180 degrees take away theta is equal to minus cos of theta. So I'm going to go to my log tables and look for something in the identities page that will help here. And on page 14, this is the formula we get. So cos of A, which is 180 degrees, minus B, which is theta, is equal to cos of 180 degrees cos of theta plus sine of 180 degrees sine of theta and you can use your log tables or you can go to page 13 cos of 180 degrees is minus 1 cos theta plus sine of 180 degrees is 0 times sine theta which gives me minus cos theta which is exactly what we wanted so qed so part five hence or otherwise find the value of h so going back to what we've just worked out so cos of 180 degrees minus theta is equal to minus cos of theta and also what we would have worked out in part two and part three so the cos of angle abd and the cos of angle dbc we're going to try use this to find h. So if we go back and look at our diagram, we can see that the angle ABD is this one here, and the angle DBC is this one here, and together they add up to 180 degrees. So angle ABD plus angle DBC is equal to 180 degrees. Now, in order to use this little formula above, I'm going to rearrange it slightly to say, well, angle ABD is equal to 180 degrees, take away angle DBC. So then we could say, well, then the cos of those angles would have to be equal. So this is equal to cos of cos of 180 degrees take away angle dbc but using the formula we can say that actually the cos of angle abd is equal to minus cos the angle of dbc now you could work that either way i've taken angle dbc to the right but you could have taken angle abd and it will still work out Going back to our formula, there's my red angle, here's my green angle. If I did the other way around, sorry. So here's my green angle, it's better. And then here is my red angle, DBC. So what I'm saying then is 63 minus H squared over 18 H is equal to minus 1575 plus 2 H squared all over 225h and we can work that through just be careful with your minus so let's multiply both sides by the denominators so we get 225h times 63 minus h squared is equal to minus h as i minus 18h times 1575 plus 2h squared and let's multiply it so 225H times 63, that gives us 14,175H minus 225H cubed is equal to minus, H, minus 18H by 1575 gives me minus 28,350H minus 36H cubed. Um, we have a cubic here, but notice that we have no h squared and we have no constant. So it's quite a straightforward one to work with. Um, I'm going to bring everything over to one side and I'll have minus 225h cubed plus 36h cubed plus 14,175h plus 28,350h equals zero. 
That gives me minus 189 h cubed plus 42,525 h equals zero. We pull out a h in front and that ends up giving us minus 189 h squared plus 42,525 equals zero. So here I'm gonna let H zero equal, or sorry, let H equal zero, because that's one of our answers. Uh, it's not valid, because we know that there has to be some height to this pole. And then we'll work with what's inside the bracket. Uh, you can use difference of two squares here to give us both answers, but one of the answers will be positive, one will be negative. So what would be, I suppose, a little bit quicker would be go straight to bringing the constant to the other side, so 42,525. So it should be minus 189 h squared equals minus 42,525, but then we can make them both positive. And then h squared is equal to 42,525 divided by 189, which gives me 225. So I have h squared is equal to 225. The correct answer here is h is equal to plus or minus square root of 225, which gives me plus or minus 15. But actually, because it's height, only the positive answer will be valid, which is where we get our h is equal to 15 meters. Earlier on in the question, you could have, um, so at this point here, divided across by h if you wanted to. Usually we don't divide across by a variable because we lose one of the answers. But here, we're only ever going to get one answer for the value of h. So there will be no issue and it would have simplified the question a little bit. So the final part of this question says, using your answer to part A, B or otherwise, find the shortest distance from the foot of the tower D to the roadway A, B, C. So the shortest distance from a point to a line is always the perpendicular route. So let me add this into our diagram here. So it will be something like this. So what we're going to do to find that length that I've drawn in in red is we're going to use the triangle D, B, C. And we're going to try and work out the perpendicular height of it. So before I do that, we need to go back to the start of this question and pull out some information. So from part one, we worked out the length of, in particular, I want B, D and C, D, but let's work them all out. Remember, we've just worked out that H is equal to 15. So that was 15 metres. So now I can work out that D, A is 100 metres and db is 75 meters and dc is 65 meters and because we're going to work with this triangle here we're also going to want to work with this angle here and remember we had the cause of that angle from an earlier part and we can work this out now for simplification i'm just going to call it cause b the reason we had the long name was because there was two cos b's because we were working with both of those angles. But when I work this out and put it into the calculator, I get 3 over 2. So here's the triangle. This is B, D, C. And we're looking for this height here, which we can call X. We have this angle here. And... I also know from the previous part that this is 75 meters. So if I pull out a little right angle triangle, so I'm going to pull this out here. So here's my B. That's the angle I want. There's D. And this length is X. We don't know it. And this is 75. So here I have opposite and hypotenuse. So I know that opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So the sine of B is equal to x over 75. Now, it'd be good if we could figure out what sine of b is. Remember, we already have cos of b up here, so we're gonna work with that. So here's a little right angle triangle. If I know cos of b is three, sorry, it's not three over two, it should be three over five. So three over five, and that gives me adjacent over hypotenuse. So there's my five, here's my angle, here's my three. So let's work out this side here, which is my opposite side using Pythagoras. So five squared 
is equal to opposite squared plus 3 squared. So the opposite squared is equal to 5 squared take away 3 squared. So the opposite squared is equal to 25 minus 16. Sorry, 25 minus 9, which gives me 16. So the opposite is equal to 4. So because I now know that is 4, I can say that the tan of B is opposite over adjacent and the sine of B is opposite over hypotenuse. So I know, I'll work in the middle piece here. So what I now know is sine of B is equal to X over 75, but it's also equal to 4 over 5. Um, and when we work that through, I can get 5X is equal to 300. So X is equal to 60 meters. That is the shortest distance between the foot of the pole to the roadway. So all the maths there was quite straightforward. They were all right angle triangles, but there was quite a lot to that question, especially the figuring out of how to approach it.